Hello, everyone. This is Chris Vandenbosch, Vice President for Higher Education with ClassLink. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar, The Impact of Access and Analytics in Higher Education, brought to you in partnership uh, with Marcus Evans. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. Um, you can expand your slide area to, or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows on the right, top right corner. If you have any questions during the web webinar, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We will try to answer as many as possible during the webinar, but if a fuller answer is needed or we run out of time, uh, we'll make sure we follow up with you in a separate email after the webinar. A copy of today's slide deck and additional help materials are available in the resource list. We encourage you to download any resources or bookmark any links that you may find useful. So what I'd like to do is introduce the participants uh, of our webinar today. Far left, uh, you see my picture, Chris Vandenbosch of Higher Education, a VP for Higher Education with ClassLink, Berj Akian, founder and CEO of ClassLink, Chad Marley, the Chief Technology Officer, Laramie County Community College. I think he refers to it as LCCC. Uh, Mark Anderson, Executive Director of IT with Dunwoody College of Technology. So what I'd like to do now is introduce Berge and have him introduce ClassLink for you. Berge? That's great. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much, Chris, and thanks, everyone, for joining today. Again, my name is Berge Akian, and I'm going to be the moderator for today's conversation. The, uh, I guess the introductory remarks I'd like to make about ClassLink is that if you've never heard of us, uh, we are celebrating our 20th year of serving education uh, this year, and what we provide is really a, a web-based software solution, and that system really provides uh, really the core of what's going to be our topic of conversation today. And those uh, those two items really are going to be around easier access to resources, which I think the shorthand for that in the industry is single sign-on. And the second part of our conversation is going to be around usage analytics and what uh, what smart schools are doing with that information. So that's my short introduction there. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Chad Marley, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Laramie County Community College located in Cheyenne, Wyoming. We have an enrollment of approximately 4,500 students. Hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Anderson, Executive Director of IT at Dunwoody College of Technology. Dunwoody is a private, not-for-profit institution of higher ed. Uh, we've stood for more than 100 years on the west side of Minneapolis, and our enrollment is uh, 1,300 students. What I'd like to do is just review our agenda briefly, uh, how and why universities are moving towards next-generation platforms for digital access uh, to access resources, ways in which access to digital resources can impact the full student life cycle, and lastly, the role that utilization analytics can have in informing strategic level decisions from investment priorities to instructional design. So we'll open this up for a panelist discussion, and I'll hand it back to Bears. Great. Thanks so much. And so here's sort of uh, some additional thoughts that I wanted to share. The, uh, really, our plan for today's webinar is to have a conversation around these topics of easier access to resources and usage analytics. Those are sort of the twin topics. And our panelists are really living this reality of these topics in their respective schools. And I guess we're really fortunate to get time with them uh, really so early here in the school year and ask them to share what really has been their journey and how are things going for them today in these two core areas. The format of the webinar is going to really be a conversation amongst the three of us, and Chris included, of course. So it's really going to be a conversation around the four of us and where we want to have some questions. By the way, the questions that I'm going to be posing to both uh, Chad and to Mark are questions that you all submitted uh, when you first registered for today. So I encourage you, if you have more questions as we go along, please submit them in the question box that Chris mentioned, and uh, we'll certainly try to get uh, to address those as well. So I'd like to first maybe begin with a, a question. I'm going to start with you, Chad. And my question to you is when we're talking about this idea of easier access, again, sort of shorthand for that is single sign-on, and the second one is really around uh, usage analytics. Let's start first with 
that single sign-on and access to resources. Can you sort of describe to me what does it mean for you when we say easier access to resources? Because I think it's sort of just a phrase, and, and sometimes it gets a little bit lost when we want to be more accurate about what we're talking about. Sure. So easier access for us was to, you know, implement a true single sign-on solution um, that allowed our students and employees uh, easy access to all the technology that we provide uh, to them and reducing our user IDs and passwords that they needed to remember uh, down into a single source. And for us to do this, um, ClassLink has been instrumental in uh, allowing us the capability to, to roll that out to our campus. Um, we have been really excited about um, the transition that we made from our previous portal solution that we were on for 12 years. And so there was a lot of change um, that was implemented to our campus, and the transition from cl to ClassLink uh, has been really smooth and uh, really quick and has been a very positive thing uh, for our campus and for IT in general. Um, and so it's been it's been awesome from our perspective. That's awesome. Thank you. And, and uh, Mark, I'm going to ask you the same question. So what does easier access mean to you, and was there a particular problem uh, maybe? Because I think a lot of folks that are listening today are thinking in terms of, you know, how relevant is this for their institution? Do they, were they, are they facing the same challenges that you might be or you were anyway? Sure, absolutely. So at Dunwoody, uh, one of the frequent things that I heard was, you know, as they become a new student here or an employee, there was, you know, roughly 16, 17 different systems that they had to have access to. And the problem with that was I kept hearing stories about how, you know, every time I have to go to these sites, I have to remember all these different sites that I have to go to. I have different user credentials for all these sites. And this is a problem because it's unorganized and I can't uh, always find what I need. And, and since implementing ClassLink here, uh, which, which Dunwoody has uh, branded Launchpad, um, we've just had so many stories of people coming down and telling us, you know, it's, it's great to be able to go to one single point of access, uh, log into that one time through the single sign-on engine, and be able to access all these different systems uh, from one place. And so that's really been the, the, big, the big plus for us was, you know, having one place to go to and having a unified communication experience for our students where rather than when they go to one department and hear about uh, their, the particular website for that department, now everybody can just say, hey, go to Launchpad and sign into that one time, and you can have access to all your resources. That's great. And, and so let me ask you, do you think sort of the, is there a change happening? I, you, you both are sort of tenured. You've been in your positions for a little while. Obviously, institutions have been around for a long time. Do you think there's sort of an evolving expectation uh, among students, probably more so, uh, but maybe also faculty uh, and staff, about what, expectations around easier access? I mean, is it really different today than it might have been five years ago, let's say? I don't know. And let's uh, hear, Mark, I'll go to you first on that one. Yeah, so I definitely hear that from our students that are coming out of the K-12 through system and coming into Dunwoody uh, right out of high school. They're, uh, going, they're taking surveys at Dunwoody and talking to folks here, and that's exactly what they're saying is that, you know, hey, I just came from a system where we had single sign-on and we had a single point of access and it was a very simplified interface where, uh, you know, not like a SharePoint platform where it's a busy interface and, and difficult to find out where you need to go uh, and how to access all your resources. This is more like uh, they're used to uh, grabbing a tablet or a, or a mobile device and just having apps or icons right there on the screen that they can click on and get to everything that they need to get to. Uh, we're also hearing that from new faculty and new staff that come on board where they say, you know, hey, the previous organization we worked at um, had a, a simpler solution and, you know, the experience so far 
at Dunwoody prior to uh, Launchpad was, you know, hey, welcome to Dunwoody. Here's the 20 websites that you need to remember and, and 20 different credentials that you need to, to keep track of in order to access the things you need to do to do your job. <coughs> I have to say, I think that's kind of funny. It's like uh, they walk in the door and have this vision of somebody throwing, you know, the cartoon of when they throw road tax and the, and the car's got to drive over all these uh, tax. When you when they walk into an organization and you tell them, okay, here's 20 websites to remember and 20 different, um, you know, usernames and passwords, that's just uh, slowing. That's just adding friction to the process, I guess, right? Yeah, absolutely. And now to hear them come in and say, because we had students that came in on the old system, and so those were the stories that they would tell, and now they come in on the new system, and they'll come and talk to me and say, you know, it's just, uh, it's changed so much dramatically the way that I access, you know, all my resources at Dunwoody, because now I can just go to the single point of access. And on the flip side of that, for us as administrators, we're able to then look at all the analytics behind this and see what people are clicking on. So extremely helpful for us. That's great. And so, so Mark, it sounds like yours was more shaped by what the experiences were of, uh, of students and maybe new faculty in previous places. Chad, was yours something similar than that? Sort of what sort of, what's the commentary that you, that you got from um, staff and and students. Yeah, I think it's very similar to Mark. Um, I think that one of the things that we often heard was that you know we're we're putting so much pressure on the faculty with so many different AV systems and uh, responsibilities for them to do it and to accomplish their jobs. But we were also requiring them to log into multiple dis different systems with multiple user names and passwords. And so one of the things that, you know, we love about the ClassLink, um, which we have branded My LCCC, um, is the ability for them to just have one LCCC uh, account. And that goes for the students and for the employees. From that one account, that allows them to get to everything that they need, um, their back office solutions through Microsoft or to our ERP applications or to our learning management uh, system. And so by simplifying the ability to access all of those resources, um, we have had nothing but positive feedback from the students and from uh, the employees about how much they love the simplicity of having one single account and being able to get to that from uh, their MyL Triple C. I like that you both sort of rebranded it and made it your own kind of thing. Uh, Chad, you're saying yours is called My Triple C. Mark, you're saying you call it uh, Launchpad. How did you go about there? Was there a, was there a sort of a little team meeting where people got together and decided, you know what, this is, or w were those terms uh, terms that you were using before for previous systems? This is Chad. Hi. Um, for us, ahead, we were we were very much uh, in favor of changing what our pre from what our previous portal was called, and we felt like we needed a clean break um, from the old system to get rid of the negative uh, stigmatism that had been associated with the previous system. And by making it my LCCC, we did have a committee, um, an RFP committee. Um, that turned into the implementation team for us of, of my LCCC. We just felt like with the ability to bring everything into one location and making it sort of personalized by including the my in it, uh, it gave us a great branding uh, opportunity to um, publicize that to incoming students as well as existing students and existing uh, employees. Uh, Dunwoody, we had a very similar experience um, as Chad. We uh, we actually had a system here, a SharePoint system called Elucian Portal, um, and it it left a bad taste in everybody's mouth because as we met more about this solution, we discovered pretty quickly that it, there was a high cost and overhead to maintain it. Um, just having people constantly refresh 
their uh, information that was in there, um, and and sort of designating all these different departments with the responsibility that they didn't ask for of managing their departmental page. Um, we we decided to go back to the drawing board, and when we selected ClassLink. Um, we went through a process of, of rebranding all of our systems at Dunwoody, and and one of the thoughts that came out of that that uh, small group meeting was let's not call it Portal because that upset people, and uh, just the 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 word Portal seemed to enrage some people around the building probably because of you know the previous project so. So we looked at calling it Launchpad. We actually did a, a survey with our students, um, and we sent out the request to all of them to, to just give them a brief. We gave them a brief description of what the system was, and then to get their thoughts on what we should call it. And uh, actually, Portal. I believe Portal and Launchpad tied. And uh, you know, there was all sorts of funny names that people thought we could we should call it in there. Somebody even said Por Portal McPortal Face. <laughs> That's hysterical. Uh, I love that you did the the big survey though. That sounds great. But it's also interesting that the word portal had you know some negative connotations, and you're saying that's strictly because of whatever system you all were using before. Exactly. Yeah, SharePoint, and and just you know, if you can imagine this scene where we huddle everybody into a room and say, you know, guess what? We're implementing this new system called Portal, and you're now responsible <laughs> for managing all the content yeah. on your departmental page. Uh, whereas, you know, when we implemented ClassLink, it was you don't need to do anything. <laughs> all right, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. But I think it, that's great. I, I love the idea. Of yeah. Sorry, yeah, go uh, Paris. I just wanted to uh, throw this out there because I think the process of getting everything under one access point is no easy process, right? And I talk to many institutions, and they tell me that part of the problem with that is getting everything connected, not only for students but for staff, administrators. That can be a huge task. And I think one of the differentiators, if you could speak to this, about how this made things easier. In the ClassLink world, we do most of all those connections for you. So. Can you speak to how that may have sped up or, or helped out in the process? Uh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, I'm glad you brought that up. It's a point that I haven't thought about yet. But in, uh, in the portal system, just uh, you know, there was a big piece of integration to that with, with SharePoint where you know, the interface, part of it, the busyness of it was that you're integrating these systems with it and you want to actually display a lot of content in there. Well, it made for a really busy interface. It made for uh, difficult, uh, sometimes difficult integrations between, you know, many systems that, that maybe don't play well with Microsoft, whereas ClassLink, you're really just presenting a single sign-on app to them or icon, and they're then clicking that and going into uh, the other system. So, so it kind of creates a, a little bit of a separation between the systems. So there's not that uh, level of work that's involved when when sometimes integrating systems. Uh, but it's right. you know having that single sign-on and just being able to go right in there is, in my mind, just a much simpler interface for everybody to to uh, you know use. I, I agree with Mark, but I, I also feel like the implementation um, with ClassLink would not have been successful without the service that you guys provide of, of building those um, links into our single sign-on. Uh, with our staffing that we have uh, here at the college, um, we just would not have been able to meet the timeline of implementing in three months and moving uh, to the new environment. And for us, um, that's why we were successful, um, plain and simple, is the, the partnership that we developed with uh, Kate, our implementer, and uh, how easy it was to, to work with them when we had um, concerns or we needed changes. You know, it, it's a really fast turnaround, and it was really easy for us to implement um, the solution and have it be successful. Awesome, thank you. This is Barrett again. I guess I have I have another question about 
Uh, and so it sounds like the both of you have made this your your sort of your true home base. It sits sort of, sits in front of your ERP tools, your productivity uh, tools that uh, are used across the organization, the learning management system, and you know maybe a whole bunch of other sort of online resources. Uh, why not use? Because I, I hear this when we interact with with school organizations, uh, why not use the LMS as the home base for everything? Because it sounds like both of you, I don't know whether or not it was even a consideration, but you specifically did not take that path. Why not use the, the LMS as the home base? And uh, Mark, I'll put you up first. Sure. So we really saw the LMS as a tool uh, to work between our students and faculty. Um, and, and staff was really using a, t a completely separate tool. And so it, it really the, des the design of that LMS is, is, is just that, a learning management tool, and it's just not designed to be a single sign-on identity management type system. So <clears throat> uh, having that be the tool where, where people can go and, and access all systems was just, you know, not even a consideration for us because... We, we wanted to we wanted to keep that tool where it belonged and, and with using it how it was designed to use and then find a uh, separate tool that was going to be very simple um, and, and integrate uh, very tightly through single sign-on with all the other tools. Um, so it was as simple as that for us. We just we didn't spend too much time thinking about that one because we wanted to make sure that that LMS was focused on what it what it was brought in to do. Yeah, I agree with Mark a lot um, on his points, but we, we did consider looking at, um, because we were also implementing a new learning management system for um, LCCC, and so we did have conversations around that. But similarly, we figured or found out that, you know, we need to keep the learning management system separate. And while every employee and every student has access to the learning management system because we run training for employees through that as well, uh, it was important for us to have that true single sign-on to deliver multiple uh, applications that we wanted to have on that landing page. Uh, one of our goals uh, with this change is to push everybody um, that the first thing they log into after authenticating to the network is to go to MyLCCC and log into that and then continue on with their day and never have to leave that page um, to get their email or to get into the ERP or into learning management system. So while it was a consideration for us, it really didn't get very far um, because we didn't feel like the LMS would be able to deliver the ultimate single sign-on solution to all of our uh, applications. And Chad, I believe we both use the same uh, LMS platform too. We're using uh, Canvas. That is correct. We, we we have Canvas as well. Interesting. Thanks. Now, what ERP is it that you all use? I'm kind of curious if there's other parallels there. Chad, uh, what do you have we for use, your? Uh, we use uh, a tool called Power Campus at Dunwoody. And we're on Illusion Colleague at Laramie County. Okay. And how long have you both been using uh, Canvas? Has it been a while? Chad, how long have you been on it? Uh, we had our first pilot group this summer and full implementation uh, just three weeks ago with the uh, start of classes. Oh, wow. So you rolled, uh, you rolled this out. Uh, you rolled out the My Triple uh, LCCC, which, you know, the class link, and uh, an LMS all at the same time. We did, and in addition to that, we changed our students' uh, email system to uh, Office 365, and so, like I like, I like to say around campus that we moved a lot of cheese. <laughs> That's awesome. Well done, <laughs> brave man. <laughs> uh, and Mark, how about you? How long yeah, have you been I, on, on Canvas? I got to give it up to uh, Chad there. That's pretty impressive to uh, make all that change at one time. Uh, so this is our, uh, we're going on our third year now of Canvas, 
Um, and we also moved students over to Office 365 uh, about two years ago. So three years ago, we did the LMS change from Moodle to Canvas. Two years ago, we went from on-prem exchange to uh, Office 365. And then uh, just in uh, March of 2018 here this year, we uh, implemented ClassLink. Nice. I'm curious to ask. I don't know if I'm stepping into fire here, but uh, so uh, Chad, coming back to you, you you had the experience of deploying all these things all at the same time, sort of on a ratio. And this is like, so for everyone listening, we did not. Uh, I didn't ask this question in advance, so I don't know what the answer is going to be. But I'm kind of curious. How do how is the implementation of of uh, ClassLink as compared to some of these other uh, bigger uh, other projects? I should say. Well, they all went hand in hand, really. Um, so it was important for us to have the um, my LCCC uh, in place so that we could tie in to uh, the Canvas and the implementation of um, the Office suite to our students. Um, and what that really allowed us to do is change uh, how we were doing our security. Um, because we then provided everybody an, an Active Directory account and allowed us through the MyLCCC to really look at how we were um, categorizing in the organizational units and enrolling that out to campus. And so I feel like that was a huge benefit in addition to the uh, number of software changes that we introduced at the same time. It also... Uh, increased or improved our security levels um, across campus for employees and for students. And um, it sounds like a lot and that we did, and it, and it was a lot. I have a very exhausted staff right now. Um, but the benefits of it have been unbelievable. Um, and the excitement and the positive feedback that we've received um, it's kind of unprecedented for an IT organization uh, from my 20 years of experience. Um, usually when we make or have changes like that, um, there's a lot more negative feedback uh, than what we received, but it's really been very positive. And I think with uh, my LCCC kind of pulling everything together and making it easy for the students, whether they're in the, a lab on campus or they're on their laptop or on their tablet, or phone uh, using the native app from uh, ClassLink, uh, it has just been really beneficial to make it a much easier uh, transition and uh, been very positive overall. That's great. And, and I guess, uh, Mark, I'm going to ask you a similar question, sort of in your experience of different things that you've activated or implemented for, the, for, for Dunwoody, you know, how does this, how does this compare? Ease, complication, I don't know, whatever measure you want. So in my 20 years here at the college, <clears throat> I've never implemented something as easy as this. And the reasons for that are, you know, much like what Chad describes where, I mean, really we just had the help of uh, ClassLink to do the work. I mean, and they did all the heavy lifting. They did created all the apps for us. Uh, we we really just sat back and watched this thing get built and in a short amount of time. And as soon as it was built, uh, we immediately piloted the the uh, solution with uh, a, a, lar a pretty large group of student workers at the college. And the interesting thing was that probably a, not even a week after we piloted with them, we brought the group together to, to fi figure out how things were going. And overwhelmingly, the group uh, just said, you know, hey, we're, we're just going to keep using this, so hopefully that's okay. And by the way, um, I showed, you know, my folks in, in class it, and now everybody in my class uses it as well. And, and that's what we saw through the analytics is we saw it just explode. And, and this was during our pilot phase. Um, so it just, you know, it, it, it swooped into this college and, and just, overtook the whole college, you know, in a matter of a month, maybe a little over a month. And it was just impressive to see and, and impressive to hear all the stories of basically the student workers were saying, you know, look, I, I, I appreciate you bringing me into this pilot, 
but I refuse to stop using this. I'm going to keep using it. Not only that, but I told all my classmates to use it as well. I love it. Thank you. That's, that's fantastic, guys. I, I think one of the questions that's kind of burning in my mind, uh, I hear a lot today, and you guys probably do too, about um, user experience, enhancing the student experience. Um, and I think that getting your feedback, you're alluding to the fact that maybe there's an enhancement uh, component that you're realizing already. I don't. I know. I know it's a stretch to start thinking about how this might actually affect uh, student engagement, which may lead to you know increased persistence and those types of things. But ha have those discussions begun happening? I mean, do you think that there is a, a a meaningful impact that you can potentially measure down the road? Mark, we'll start with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's not a meeting that I go to. Uh, after our launchpad rollout where it's not mentioned in there as just being a system that has sort of unified the experience, tied things together, and, and broken down silos even around the organization. Because, like I said before, when, you, when you're a student and your experience is you go to one department and they tell you, you know, here's the financial aid website, you need to be able to access that. If you have problems with it, let us know. We'll do password resets or whatever for you and then they go on to the next department and they hear a similar story, um, you know, that has completely changed. And now the, the experience is, no matter where you go around the college, is go to Launchpad and, and you'll be able, it's intuitive, you'll log into that and, and all your apps will be right there and you'll be able to access financial aid, uh, student records, LMS, uh, career services, any application that you want to access at Dunwoody and it's all controlled through your one network account. So it's interesting, though, that you, po that you touch on that because that's not something that I really thought about when we, before we started implementing this. I, I, you know, as soon as I saw it, I just knew that we had to have this and it was going to be the right tool for us. And I, and I, I knew from, a, from an IT standpoint that it was going to pull things together, but watching that happen across campus and, and going to these meetings and meeting with with the pilot group and and just experiencing this firsthand, uh, watching everything kind of get pulled together has been incredible. And now being able to uh, you know take the analytics piece of this and just assign that app to anybody around campus I want to based on their Active Directory group uh, down right down to the single users if I want to. Um, has just been incredible, and now you know those folks on on president's cabinet or or um, you know executives at Dunwoody can can log into this thing and see exactly what what apps students are accessing and which ones they're not touching. That's yeah, thank you. Yeah, and and we're similar in that way, and I think you know we we started pushing out basically a snapshot of what happens every week um, to different directors and different um, president cabinet members just so they can get a, a, a feel for how much the system is being used. And um, we are going to use the data that we're gathering to justify keeping existing applications, right? Because sometimes we, we've been unable to justify or really validate that these applications are using and that we should continue to um, invest money into them, and now we'll have the ability to see how much they are actually being used through the analytics. And we're excited. Mm -hmm. We're we're a guided pathways institution, um, and so data is is very important in in understanding what people are using. And so as we get more experience with um, my L triple C and the analytics, is going to be very valuable for us. Um, to do that as well. I think one of the stories um, that is really cool how we ended up using ClassLink um, on our campus is for the orientation or our new applicants that are wanting to sign up for orientation um, because of when we assign them an account through Active Directory, as soon as they uh, get approved as an applicant and move through the process, we have established a, a new folder um, that they see when they log into my LCCC uh, that guides them through the processes that they need to do um, to become a student. And that has been 
very valuable to us to have it in one place, whereas before it was a series of emails that were sent to the student. We had multiple accounts that they had to set up and, and do before they could move on, uh, whereas now it's, it's one ID, uh, one account, um, the LCCC account, um, that allows them, once they're approved as an applicant, um, to start g integrating into our system. And we feel like that's going to be very valuable in um, completing the process of getting the student into classes. And uh, so we're excited to see how that turns out. Um, it's been very positive from our admissions reps, uh, the comments that we get from them about how much easier it is to get the students started uh, using the technology. So, Chad, um, I, I, I like what you had to say there. Um, so you're actually, uh, if you could describe to me how you're doing that a little bit, I'm, I'm curious. You're actually uh, using ClassLink as sort of a CRM or, or to have the students go through that funnel um, as from applicants all the way through. And are you just doing that? You're assigning that by uh, Active Directory groups, so they're in an applicant group or something, and then you're tying the the uh, process folder to that group, so everybody that's in that group has visibility of that. Or how are you doing that? Yeah, that's correct. We're we're assigning them to a specific group. So we use uh, Illusion to recruit for our CRM to get the applicants in, but once they apply and finish their application, so submitting the transcripts or completing whatever other documentation. Once they've completed all that and become what we call a student um, for us, then they get their Active Directory account and then that gives them the access to get to MyLCCC and then they can go from there to establish um, whatever other security measures that we have for like uh, password resets and that kind of stuff so that we get that set up up front. And then it guides them through setting up their scheduling orientation because every student is required to attend orientation in person or online. And so it walks them through that whole process. Okay, this is Barrett again. I want to I now pivot a little bit as we started this conversation around, uh, which just began with this question about analytics. And I want to dive deeper into that. That's the part two of our conversation. And if we have a little bit of time, I also want to touch on security today. So speaking about the analytics conversation, and Chad, you just mentioned how it's an important, uh, it's become an important component of the system because it's going to help the institution guide decision making. Uh, walk me through who's the audience for the usage analytics information that you have that you now have, and how remarkably different, if at all, is this information from what you had before? Sure, we have um, we have an IT governance committee um, on campus that consists of uh, representatives from all the departments plus students. And that's where we talk about, you know, new software systems or new applications or new technology that we want to bring to campus. We also review the budget of purchasing uh, software and maintaining those uh, licenses and, and stuff. And so I envision that this will be something that we will um, very readily and easily have the ability to pull up reports um, to uh, identify software or solutions that aren't being utilized. Um, and I think for us, I mean, we spend a lot of money every year on systems and we can't always prove that they're being used. And for me to be able to take this information easily to uh, that group, to the governance committee, um, and show them, yes, we need to continue this because we're having this much uh, use of the system, uh, will be much easier sell than to um, the way we used to have to do it, or couldn't do it at all, actually, um, through our old uh, system. So that's very important for us. Um, obviously, we have, you know, less and less money each year to, to do things like that, but we're expected to do more uh, as an IT uh, organization or group within the organization. And so to have that uh, readily available and easily accessible 
um, to do that is going to be uh, tremendous for us from that aspect. We also provide, um, like I said, we, we provide a report every week uh, about the logins and uh, who's doing what and what they're accessing, what, what's the top apps that they're getting, and we deliver that to the President's Cabinet. And, um, you know, while, while the sale of this system was pretty easy, um, once we made the recommendation out of our uh, RFP committee, um, the proof is in the pudding, right? And um, being able to show that we are having way more people, uh, students and employees, log into MyLCCC compared to our previous portal system, and then the positive feedback that we receive uh, is just great. And, um, you know, we're fairly new. We've been, we soft launched May 29th of my LCCC, we full launched on June 30th. And um, so to be able to see that we have the data there to be able to help us validate our choices and our decisions. Um, but in down the road, um, I think that being able to have access to the analytics piece um, that is provided uh, is gonna be great and uh, very powerful for us to to move other initiatives forward as we as we need to. Nice. And Mark? So similar experience here at Dunwoody. Um, we have a governance committee as well, and that group is tasked with figuring out what software solutions and technology solutions we implement here on campus. And in the past, we've always uh, had a different process for figuring out which ones are, are going to be successful, which ones are being used. Uh, really, in the past, as far as which ones are being used, the only way we figure that out is by surveying the students. So having a system now where we actually have data behind how many clicks are happening and how many logins are happening uh, is going to be extremely powerful to us, um, and we're going to use that to guide our decision-making uh, in the IT Governance Committee. So very, very similar experience with us. We're, uh, we have, so, so we're, we're, use, we're doing a different, a slightly different approach than, than what Chad is doing. Uh, we're actually uh, making the analytics app visible to people on the president's cabinet um, and, and on the ITC so that they can see themselves. And uh, I'll add marketing as well. They're, uh, they're, they have a huge say in, you know, the brand of the organization and, and, and how we're using ClassLink and, and some of these apps. So having them have visibility, not only the cabinet, but also marketing and also the, the IT governance is going to completely change the way that we go about our business and figuring out what's, what's important and, and what's not being used by the students and, and, and even being able to sort of dive into you know why these some systems are not being used by the students. If if we have a system that we know students have to use as part of their time here at Dunwoody, um, just sort of drilling into why we think that it's not being used, and, and it just allows us to have all those conversations that we could never have before. So it's very powerful. Um, it's very easy to use. I'm just amazed at how I don't have to train anybody in on it. I mean, I've, I've given it to folks on our cabinet that, that uh, you know, let's just say they're not very technology uh, friendly and, and they don't even call on how to access, you know, the various screens. It's pretty easy to see on the dashboard and, and through the logins and the app uh, analytics what people are doing. And, and uh, I really like what, what Chad says, though, about the reporting piece, and that is something that we're currently not doing, but I would love to explore that more and uh, not only give them access to, to the app through, through Launchpad, but also just email them or, or get them, you know, weekly reports. Uh, but it will definitely be a big factor in dri decision uh, driver here at the college as we go through the motions of figuring out, you know, which systems we want to implement. You know, what's interesting, I'm hearing you say, uh, and Chad mentioned it as well, that uh, you're sort of changing the dialogue a little bit uh, through uh, through sharing information in a in sort of an active, maybe even proactive way. Uh, Mark, you're saying that you've granted access to the analytics 
uh, functionality, the analytics screen, you've act, you've granted direct access to the to that area of of uh, what you call a launch pad, uh, the class link system, and and that's and that's kind of a, a different model, I think, than is typical in many organizations. I think it's much more typical in an organization where. Uh, that's a routine process for someone in your seat to have to produce those reports and then send them out, you know, probably create them, uh, manage them, create them, and then disseminate them in some regular schedule. Uh, and you're, you sort of flip that script. You've given uh, those decision makers uh, direct access. Chad, I think you mentioned the same. Do you want to comment on that, Mark? Is that, I think that's, whenever an organization does that, I think it, ushers in uh, a new new enlightenment that didn't happen before. Yeah, it, it sort of has empowered them, too. You know, they feel like, wow, you know, my IT department trusts me to go in here and look at this stuff, and they have faith in me that I know what I'm doing, and, and I'm not going to break something. And uh, for me, it just sort of takes that workload off of the IT department and puts it on them. Uh, of course, the caveat to that is hopefully they're going in there and checking it, but... Uh, you know, I have the analytics to back that up to see whether they're going in and checking it. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, you could check to see if they're using the analytics. <laughs> yeah, um, right. Uh, Chad, does it change yeah. uh, the type of the conversation, I guess is my question. Yeah. Well, I definitely think it will. Um, we haven't rolled it out the way Mark has yet, but I, I envision that we will as people become more familiar with the information that we have available to share with them. Um, and I think we'll become more uh, comfortable as we um, learn more about what we can share and what's important to the people that are asking. Um, and because we want to make sure we just don't share information that they'll never look at or, or don't need uh, for their jobs. But I think, you know, as we become more familiar with everything that's available within the analytics, um, it will just make it easier for us. Um, instead of, as you mentioned, having to create a report and send it out, you know, we can just give them access to it and they can go look at it themselves. Um, and there is no um, story that we have to change because we don't like the way the analytics look, um, which I think is very important that we can just be straight up honest and say, here it is. We don't have to try to calculate something that didn't exist before. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I get, this is Chris. I got a quick follow-on on the analytics and, and kind of who you're sharing and, and who's utilizing that information to improve various aspects um, of your institution. And one of them that was shared to me by one of our uh, another client was the fact that we actually can show an institution. Uh, and I know understand you guys are in your first few weeks of of classes. Uh, would it not be nice to have uh, an analytics piece? that shows students that have not yet logged in a couple of weeks into the, into the term and, and literally will highlight those and you can send that out to folks like counselors and others in student services to, to quickly kind of intervene if, if that might be necessary. Is that something you guys considered or is that, do you think that might be beneficial? Uh, Mark, we'll start with you, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm really excited actually to tie that piece into it because you know, we we talk a lot here about retention, and 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 that's a big part of what higher ed education deals with, as far as you know, trying to retain those students. And uh, you know, somebody sold them to get them here to start, and and retaining them is is absolutely critical. So having you know just another sort of tool here that we can use and leverage to figure out who's not signing in is going to be very valuable to us. Um, and I'm actually thinking about this from a different way, though. I'm thinking about we, we actually have a retention tool that we use up here that uh, integrates with our uh, LMS and integrates with our student information system, and I'm, I'm hoping I can tie that tool into uh, pull some reports out of here or uh, pull some reports out of our Active Directory to just figure out who's logging in and who isn't. Um, but but um, you bet. I mean, I'll be assigning this tool, the the analytics uh, login piece, to our student affairs division, and uh, and let them sort of you know use it how, how they will. And 
it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that, that shakes out, but I think, you know, just more data, the better when we're talking about tracking retention. Sure. Yeah, uh, hey, Mark, this is Barrett. Uh, I think that's a great idea, by the way, and the system, our system absolutely has APIs that allow for easy data access and to be able to be pulled into other systems. Of course, you can do CSV dumps. So when that time comes, definitely let us know. We can we can help greatly with that. Okay, I want to do one more uh, one more short topic. We're, we're we're I think we have a little window of time, and it gets on the topic of security. I didn't ask this at the start, but I'm I'm going to ask now. Mark, uh, you first. Tell me what is your your directory. I think we've alluded to it. I want to know just a little bit of the technical landscape, and then I'm going to ask you questions about how, if at all, uh, does this uh, now new home base allow for a conversation with regards to security of the network. So firstly, what's your domain and has that changed recently? And I'll start with you, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are primarily a Microsoft shop here at Dunwoody. We run Active Directory services, directory services um, and we actually have a pretty clean domain. We've, we've done a really great job over the years of maintaining it and keeping it nice and clean and organized. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's for all, all sorts of systems that we had doing LDAP queries and Active Directory lookups. And, and so things had to be sort of tidy and nice in there. So it, it made it, it made our rollout to Classlink that much easier to not really have to do much in Active Directory. It was really already set up the way we needed it. It had the, the proper group structure. We had, you know, things segmented out properly, security groups, distribution groups, et cetera, all that. Um, and, and I, I you know, I, I know that it, it's, Classlink has been instrumental in taking us to the next step, you know, by bringing in single sign-on, taking the uh, work away from these departments who are managing the logins to these various systems, you know, these, these 20 different systems I talked about before, um, you know, we actually had departments that were managing those password resets and, and really managing those systems. And, and now all that work has been brought into IT where it belongs. Um, we're, we've streamlined this and, and and cut it down so that, that people don't have all these different potential attack vectors with all these different user accounts into our system. And, and now it's all authenticated through our Active Directory system. We control it all, and, and we can control the password complexity. Um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many stories I heard where somebody would come down and, and with a password issue to one of these systems, and we would work with that department to try to figure out the problem. And, you know, they were using passwords that, that should just never be used. And so to be able to tie in the Microsoft uh, security and password complexity into this whole thing and, and cut down the amount of accounts people have has been uh, just a huge change for us and, and a, a very welcome change. Nice. And, uh, Chad, I'm going to ask you, and then I think we're getting close to our time, so then after this last question, I'm going to come back to both of you for sort of final remarks. But, Chad, tell me what your network is and how, if at all, has this project sort of played into a security mindset? Well, I kind of mentioned it earlier. Um, we're, we're Active Directory, Microsoft Shop, um, primarily, and um, uh, unfortunately, we weren't as uh, organized as Mark's group um, from that standpoint. And so this really allowed us or forced us to really look at how we were doing the Active Directory um, within LCCC. And so I think it's been a huge benefit for us um, because it allowed us to to really go back and clean up some of the things that we've done over the last 10 years um, to streamline what we needed to be able to manage um, the students and the employees. And so from that aspect, for me, um, that has been awesome, uh, especially in this world where we're worried about security. Um, I think one of the things that I love the most about Classlink um, and my LCCC is the My Files. And what that has allowed us to do is have the students sync up and employees sync up to their Microsoft uh, OneDrive. And um, 
you know, I love being able to sit at my kitchen table at my house and just log into ClassLink and click on my files and get to my uh, shared drive on the network or my OneDrive without having to do Citrix or VPN any longer uh, to be able to get to that information. And so, you know, it's a secure way for us to share um, the capabilities for people to use the storage that we have and that's provided to them. Um, but we can also do it through a shared network um, from campus. And, you know, once you set up that connectivity uh, within the ClassLink system, uh, the security of Active Directory and, and Microsoft and, and ClassLink allows us to have that flexibility um, for people to be able to connect and get to information when they're not on campus. And I just love that feature. I use it all the time myself. Um, and I know more and more people are starting to, to do that as well. Uh, you know, I, I can't help but agree with you there. I, uh, I, I think we all sort of lived uh, using VPN, well, many of us anyway, lived the days of a terminal server system or a VPN or something like that, and we thought, wow, this is so great. And then, and then you have sort of the new experience of what we're able to provide now, which is right in the browser, and it's uh, just as secure, more so in some ways, and I just think it's a whole lot better, too. All right, let me do this. Uh, we're going to go back and, and just do some uh, final thoughts, final remarks, uh, tips, and advice. Uh, Mark, I'll, I'll come to you first, uh, maybe just a couple a sentence or two about what your thoughts are that in this area, access and analytics. Uh, final thoughts. As I said already, I, just a, sort of a, a helpful hint here for people. You know, make sure you're, if you're using Active Directory, make sure that you've got a clean uh, Active Directory environment and group structure. Um, and, and as far as, as access, um, it's just been incredible. And like I said, having, having these stories of people coming to me and saying, you know, I had 20 different websites to check with 20 different passwords, cutting it down to, to one and simplifying everything is, was key here. And, uh, you know, even hearing these experiences as my kids go through school about some of the systems they have to access, and as a parent, I have to access where I have to, you know, it's, it's like old Dunwoody where I have to go access all these different solutions. It makes me want to pick up the phone and call the IT director over at these colleges or, or uh, uh, K through 12s and say, you know, hey, have you heard of ClassLink? Maybe you should check it out. <laughs> that's, that's great. I love how you describe it as old Dunwoody. <laughs> I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bad old Dunwoody, bad. Uh, all right, and Chad, what's uh, any sort of closing remarks from you as well? Well, I think um, for us, meetings I've had this week with my managers and with um, the administrator for my LCCC for us, um, this week, you know, we talked about, because usually the, the week before when faculty return and the first week students are here, we are usually bombarded with password resets and all kinds of stuff associated with their accounts. And the group as a whole said that they can't believe how quiet it's been um, this semester as a start. And we attribute that to the implementation of, of ClassLink and, and my LCCC uh, in, in allowing our students and employees the one account to be able to access all their information. And so it's made it so much easier for them. Um, and we feel like that has really cut down on the time um, and tickets that we uh, would receive normally during this two-week period of, of ramp up and first week of classes. Um, and that we feel like that's directly related to um, this implementation of ClassLink. Okay, thanks, uh, guys. That's that's great to hear your final thoughts. Appreciate that. Uh, we This is Chris again. We have time, uh, I think, for some audience questions, so we're going to answer as many of those as possible. Um, if we do run out of time, uh, we'll make sure to get back with everyone who asked questions uh, after the webinar today. Uh, so let's hop right in uh, to one of the questions posed. Um, how How has the change management been managed uh, in the transition from your legacy product. So we'll start with you, Mark. So we met with a lot of departments uh, to go over the what documentation, communication processes they had around uh, getting students' systems access. 
Uh, we, talk, we talked that through with all them, got them to update, uh, point at Launchpad. The beauty of, of this system, though, is, is that there really isn't any legacy systems here. It was all, we, we're continuing to use all the systems that we used in the past. It's just that rather than sending them individually to these separate systems, we're sending them to the identity management single sign-on system. Uh, they're logging in one time, and then they have the ability to click on all those icons. So it's from a change right. management perspective, it was, it was pretty easy uh, because all we really had to do was show people uh, how to change around their documentation to, to point at the new system. And then uh, we aligned this with uh, a branding change that we did at the college. So, so marketing was going through a branding change and changing all the look and feel of the websites. Um, so we really just piggybacked onto that and launched it with that. Um, and we communicated through you know, all, our, <clears throat> all our regular meetings, weekly communication, marketing materials. Um, and, and really the key was just getting those departments to, to stop telling people, hey, go to my individual site, but now go to Launchpad. Uh, so rollout was pretty simple in that way. Awesome. That's great. Chad, uh, yeah, Chad anything on, on your change management process? Well, I think we, you know, we did a lot of similar things as far as communication out, but I also believe that, you know, we utilized our RFP committee and made them the implementation team as well. And, you know, they were responsible for different areas of the college, uh, representing, you know, whatever um, education department or regular department or students um, to help us pull together everything that we wanted to make sure uh, we delivered within our implementation of, of ClassLink. And um, for us, that, that made it great to, to have that. And then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, working with Kate on the implementation um, and helping us manage uh, some of the change that was going to be happening, uh, having that experience from her uh, was very valuable for us and uh, made us successful. Awesome. Uh, great. I think we've got time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, are, one of the questions here is talking about uh, potential positive impacts you might be seeing uh, in other campus groups, obviously other than IT and managing budgets, but I think uh, one of the things mentioned was student support, student services. You guys touched on that a bit uh, earlier. I was wondering if you might expand on that a little, uh, Mark. So can you can you reframe that question a little bit? I'm not fully understanding what, yeah. what you need out of that one. Sure. I think, yeah, I think the question is, is around what other, um, what other departments uh, like student services, student support, are you seeing positive impacts uh, on campus? Are there other departments that are experiencing similar positive results? Yeah, so a lot of our departments have a lot of specialized software and specialized web pages that they need to go to. And one of the amazing things about this was being able to show people just how easy it is to to leverage uh, ClassLink to actually do these app build-outs for them. So we've mm -hmm. trained them to just go there, go, go to uh, Launchpad and, and uh, request an app build-out, which will get sent to ClassLink. They'll do the app build-out and, and make it available. We'll put it in our Dunwoody College uh, library apps. And, and now they're able to, to just go in there and pull, you know, whatever apps they want. Um, and I'm, what, I'm, what I'm having happen is people are telling me that they're, you know, rather than having all these bookmarks and all these, uh, all these maintaining control to all these different usernames and passwords, they're just putting it mm -hmm. all in ClassLink or Launchpad and then, you know, going there, uh, clicking on, on the apps that they need to, to use, saving their credentials into, into the Launchpad system and, and just sort of using that as, as their, uh, credential manager and, and their single point of access to everything. And we're hearing about this across the board from students, faculty, staff. They're all uh, finding different ways that they can use it. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, what about you, Chad? Uh, departments impacted? Oh, significantly. Um, I think one of us, one of the things that we were losing with our old portal system was what we called virtual offices. So they had different communities within the old portal um, to deliver PDF files. So think of HR, uh, where they have all these files and uh, forms that need to be filled out and completed and, and that kind of stuff. And so one of the things that we needed to do was 
to figure out a solution for that. And, and with us being a Microsoft campus, we, we started creating um, what we're calling virtual offices um, using SharePoint and allowing them the ability to uh, post whatever uh, documents they need out there, forms or processes or whatever it may be. Um, and this is purchasing HR, president's office. And so just within that, we're able to create one simple folder um, and we can point people or they can point people to that folder to go out and uh, get the virtual office that they need to and then be able to get to um, all the forms that they need to hire a new person or to terminate somebody or whatever it may be. And so it made it really easy for them, uh, whereas before they would have to provide a path for everybody to get to um, to find a form uh, in the old right. system, whereas now they just click on their virtual office. Uh, in there. That's, that's so awesome. Yeah. I, I never would have thought that HR would have been impacted. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's kind of amazing. Um, I, th I think we might have time uh, for one more question. So uh, this one's kind of around analytics and, and utilizing analytics, but um, uh, what other metrics um, might you have discovered in the ClassLink analytics that, that maybe you hadn't thought of before, for example, as opposed to like software utilization and, uh, and, and student logins. Are there other areas? Uh, I know one of the, some of those that we track are things like mobile access and uh, IP, IP ranges, those types of things. Is, is any of that becoming a, a metric that you guys think you might want to track? Mark, go ahead. Yeah, we are, I mean, there's just so much in here. We're, I'm finding things in here all the time that just amaze me that we're tracking. And I think a lot of this is going to be valuable to us. We're, I got to figure out a way to get uh, like the student affairs division to leverage the login report and see who's not signing in. Um, I think our marketing department could really uh, find a lot of useful information here around how people are accessing our systems, what sort of devices are they using, and how is that changing over time. Um, and, and, and then, like you mentioned, Chris, just, you know, the app, the analytics behind the apps and using that to figure out, was it, you know, are these systems being used? Um, do, we, do we maintain right. the system but not publish it on the, the home page because nobody's clicking on it there? You know, those types of things. So very powerful. Mm -hmm. Sure. Awesome. What about you, Chad? Well, we've, we really enjoyed being able to see what kind of systems are um, being used, so OSs and, and things like that, um, because we get, a lot of times we get requests for us to create Mac labs or whatever it may be on campus, and, you know, we have to have some kind of justification to do that. And for us, right. I can really go out here and look at the browser and operating system uh, analytics and, and see that, you know, the the machines that are connecting via Mac are very low for us. and. And so I can provide some justification that I don't see the need for, for doing that. Um, and so right. things like that, and as we're getting, you know, three or four months into it now, uh, we're starting to discover some of the things that, you know, we, we obviously didn't have in our previous solution um, that we're excited to, to explore uh, how we can use that. Sure. Fantastic. That's awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for your participation and all your wonderful insights today. Um, on behalf of ClassLink, I think that's all we have time for is questions today. Uh, but we'd like to thank everyone for attending and joining us, uh, and also the panelists for, for sharing so deeply uh, into how this might have impacted them. Um, would, if, if anyone would like to learn more about ClassLink, feel free to go to ClassLink.com uh, and visit us there, or you can visit us on Twitter, at ClassLink, uh, to keep up with the news and updates around ClassLink. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for your participation today. Uh, and hoping you all have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.